Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the PDF generator component in Adalo, which uses this service here, which is pdfgeneratorapi.com. Um, so just to introduce it, um, let's look at the pricing. Um, monthly billing, you might be talking $59 a, a month to use this, but for just getting started and testing for the first three months, it's basically going to be free, zero. Um, because you get a lot of free credits for testing out. So you need to come here, sign up for a free account, which I've already done. Um, so make sure you've done that and we'll go and look at Adalo now. Okay. So what you'll want to do is look for the component PDF Generator API. You see I've got it installed already, but you're going to have to find that in the marketplace and it's a free component. And it appears as a button like this. And there's quite a lot of different things that you need to fill in. And it's kind of confusing. It really took me a while. Um, I had various errors, but I finally figured it out. So I'm making a video to hopefully make it a bit easier for you guys to figure out. Um, one thing to note is down here, you've got quite a few links that are kind of useful. And I would have struggled without them, to be honest. So it's telling you where to get the various things to fill in, and we'll do that together in a moment. But the most important thing here is this link. Learn more about how to use this component here, and this is going to bring the um, documentation of how to do it with the Darlow. And they've got a nice example app here, which you can clone. So what you'll want to do is maybe clone it, just to get a feel of what it's like. So you go on the preview here, and you can click on clone app and that'll put an example on your account and that's actually what I've got open here so you can see here they've got a list and they're using the button component and they show you how they're using it okay and that's important um, you can look through how they've done it to get an understanding uh, but we're also going to do it in our video here um, but I, I'm using their cloned app just because I want to use that database here. It's got a few example records that we can be using. All right, but we'll start from scratch and go through everything. So let's delete everything they've got here. And we've got a button with nothing on it. Okay. Um, and I think most people figured out how to use um, populate single pieces of data. But what's a little bit more difficult is to go through database items and make a PDF with a list of records in it. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is our API key. So you need to go across to your PDF generator API account and be logged in. Find your API key under account settings on the left hand side. Then you've got your API key here. So we'll want to copy that across to our app. Next, we've got our secret. So you click on the show hide thing here, copy that. And then we can put that in the set second box. Next, we need a workspace ID. So we get that from our admin panel here. And we've got our workspace ID. We'll copy that in next. The next one's the template ID. Now part of this video is about um, creating a template. I'm going to leave that blank just for a moment. And the next one down is a file name for your generated PDF. So here, I mean, you can call it what you like, you can use dynamic text, but I'm just going to have the name of the PDF as the current time with no formatting, just easy. But you can have that however you like. The next one is what are the repeating items we want to use as, um, as list data. Um, so here, let's say we've got menu items. We see um, on this cloned app, we've got some data to work with. So I'm going to use those menu items. Uh, you can filter them. You can, for example, if it belonged to a user, you could say where email is logged in user, etc. cetera. Um, if you're familiar with Adalo, you'll know what I mean there. Uh, sort them, you know, I could have the most recently created menu item first, however you like, maximum number of items, etc. And then here you're going to have your repeating data display. So we'll be looking at this at the same time we're looking at our template. So um, let's go ahead and create a template. I created one here, but we're going to create a new one. 
and it's going to want this JSON date file, but we'll add that after. I'll show you that in a minute. So let's say no data for now. All right, and you can see there's different components uh, we can put here. We can drag them onto the screen. Here we can have a piece of text, for example, um, example PDF generation from Adalo. All right, and then this uh, would be a title. It's not dynamic. It's just text like that. Okay, but if we want something to be dynamic, uh, we'd be using this over here, insert date field. So let's do that next. Um, so I'm going to insert a date field, and there'll be nothing there, and that is because we have not dealt with, um, you know it asked for that JSON file, we need to do that. Okay, but just to put a placeholder there, what we're going to have here is the title. Okay, and below, we're going to have our table of repeating data. So we can stretch these out. Okay, so uh, obviously you can add more rows or columns, so uh, you can insert column right, for example, but I'm going to stick with three for now. We're also going to have an, this is an automatic table, that's going to be important. Okay, that date field, yeah, that will be coming in place soon. But let's just see what um, we've got for menu items right now. Okay, we, we've got a name. Uh, we've got, what else? We've got price. We've got an ID. All right, so let's use them for our example piece of data here. So I just want to fill in the headers. So it's the name, the price, and the ID. Let's say we're going to use those three pieces of data, which are um, repeating data, list data. And then we've just got our one thing here, which is the title. So if we go back to Adalo here, go back to our button. All right, so it wants our template ID. All right, so we're going to save our template. And then if we go back, okay, let's close our template for now, and go to our templates. To the left-hand side, you can see our template ID. So we're going to copy that and bring that into our Adalo app. All right, now let's go down, and this is an important part. This is our JSON payload. Um, now, we had a title, okay? So the title of our PDF could be, it can come from anywhere. Um, we could have a text input, for example, uh, for our PDF title. All right, so in this example, we're just going to do it from an input. You can be using magic text um, to take things from the database, however you want to do that. But we're going to be doing it from that input field. So the title will be the input. Um, and then all we need is line items. Okay, as you can see here, it says use line items as a placeholder. But this is kind of confusing, so uh, just follow what I'm doing here. I've got line underscore items. Okay, and then one extra curly bracket to close the JSON. Okay, now I'm hoping that is correct. Um, I actually had some formatting issues when doing this. So this is our JSON format, and our template also needs that data. So I'm just going to make um, a JSON file in. Uh, for me, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you like. All right, so I'm going to have a new text file here in Visual Studio Code. And all we want is what we just did there, um, to start with at least. So we're going to have our JSON payload. At this point, actually, um, let's go back to the documentation because it gives you examples, which is kind of useful. Um, so the docs, how to integrate with the Darlo. All right, so here's an example JSON payload. And I'm going to copy that across. All right, now in our case, we know we've only got a title. I wasn't using any other information there. I just, if you look at Adalo, all I've got is a title and the line items. Okay, so of course you can be adding more, but in this example, I've only got one thing, which is title. So let's remove all of that. But then we've got the line items, and this is kind of important. Now, 
Um, in my example, I'm using three variables, so I don't really need to change that. Going back to Adalo here, um, these line items we actually put here, okay? So for our variable one, we can have the menu item name. Um, two, I think we said would do the price, and for three, we'd do the ID, right? Um, so here, the, the example data here doesn't exactly make sense, but it works because we've got three variables, they're in the right order, we know what we're doing. Okay, so the important thing now, let's save that file with json.json. And then, if we come back over to the PDF generator API, here's our template we've been making when we go, go into it. If you didn't already put the JSON file, it will ask you every time. So we can just upload that now to the one we just created in our text editor. All right, and now we're going to have the data that we've given it as an example. That means we're going to have the title available and we're going to have line items available, which would be variable one, two, and three. Okay, so title here, we can now uh, remove that and insert a date field, and we can select the title, insert data, um, and then under name, we can have our var one, uh, var one, which um, sandwich, not necessarily spelled correctly. Uh, var two was our price, and var three is our ID here. Okay, and because this is an automatic table, the other stuff should populate. Um, at this point, you can press Control and P, or on a Mac, Command and P, and it's going to preview our table and our thing based off the example data. Okay, so here we can see the title populated correctly, but the table data has not. So let's figure out why that is, and it's because here we need to select a date field. This is, uh, for example, on a dollar you select a collection where a list comes from. I've just forgotten to click line items. So if we go now and do Command P again, it should work. All right, there we go. We've got our list iterating correctly. Okay, it's important now we want to save the template. Also, um, I'm not sure if this is essential, but it seemed I had to do it. Just go here to template settings and change access to organization. And we also want it to be published. You can publish it here or you can use that little icon up there. But yeah, we need it published and access organization and apply. All right, so hopefully that's set up now. We've got all of these filled in. We've got the JSON from this side, and then we've filled in our line items, the name, the price, and the ID. The last thing to do is a button here. Okay, on our button, maybe we want to um, link to a website but the website is the response from the API, okay? Because we're outputting a URL of the PDF here. You can select different options, but we're outputting the URL. Another thing I recommend you do at this point is to have a text input. Um, okay, I'm gonna just call that response. Um, and the reason for that is because if there's an error, I want to see it. And so on our button, we'll also have an action change input value of the response to the PDF generator's output, right? So even though it's supposed to give us a URL, if there's an error, it's actually going to give us the error. And I want that to be filled in that text field so we, we would see what went wrong. Okay, so maybe we can give this a go now and fingers crossed we get a PDF. Okay, so this was going to be the title, um, first try example PDF. This looks good. 
and there we go, first time. I can't tell you how many attempts this took, but it seems I got the hang of it. So hopefully this video explainer um, helps you get around a lot of the things that um, took me a long time to figure out. Okay, so um, this is our static title. Um, this is our dynamic title that we're putting through from the, cust um, from the component. And then here is all of our dynamic data. So I hope that was a good explainer for you all. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. See you next time.